What's up, investors? It's the Russian dude. In recent weeks, Russia has witnessed a surge in military-related bureaucratic activities. From updates to the register of potential service members, to the implementation of electronic draft notices. And the most concerning part, at least for draft-age Russian men, is that all these changes were implemented rather quietly, not bringing too much attention into the media. It is like, this is what happened, so what you gonna do about it? <laughs> As a result, most people, most people came to know about them after the fact. These developments have raised concerns among many citizens. The backdrop to these changes is President Vladimir Putin's decree to expand the regular military roster by an additional 180,000 troops, bringing the total number to 1.5 million, a significant 50% increase from the initial 1 million. For many Russians, the words like Putin, decree, army, and even September in the same sentence brings up the speculation about the possibility of a new conscription. So guys, today let's talk about these recent changes, examine the factors, influencing military recruitment, and explore the potential implications for the Russian society. Like mentioned previously, President Putin's recent decree mandates the expansion of the regular military roster to 1.5 million personnel, excluding the approximately 900,000 service members in civilian roles. According to the Kremlin's spokesperson Dmitry Peskov, this decision was made as a result of a hostile environment and troublesome developments at the border. He was obviously referring to the Kursk incursion, the inability to push Ukrainians out of the Russian territory, and the constantly decreasing quality of new records, at the same time at increasingly higher prices. We spoke about this phenomena in our previous videos. But basically what it means is that those who already wanted to sign a contract for a million of rubles, they already did it. For a person who can barely make ends meet, even a million rubles, which is approximately $11,000, can solve most of his problems. Anything about it is just extra money. But when such people hear about the opportunity to sign a military contract, go to Ukraine and solve 90% of their family problems, well, they didn't think much. The highest quality and the cheapest soldiers were already recruited back then, when seven-figure payments were just announced. Increasing it twice to more than $20,000 still attracted lots of people, but not as many as originally thought. So the price per soldier skyrocketed significantly, and increasing the payments even higher will not bring many new soldiers. Everyone who wanted to make quick buck from Ukraine is already there. And then the Russian government hits a wall almost literally, offering tens of millions of rubles in order to attract relatively wealthy individuals is not going to change the picture much. These sums will be targeting scientists, IT professionals, finance workers, and so on. And while being substantial amounts, these are not going to be life-changing money for these people. As a result, the Putin's administration hit dead end, knowing very well that if they do not find a way to get more people into the military eventually, the meat assaults will grind whoever is left, and Ukraine will reclaim its territories. That is why it seems Putin out of desperation, I would say, quietly took so-called scary decision that nobody wanted him to take, which is prepare another potential forced mobilization in the near future. And that's why all these military-related bureaucratic activities we talked about in the very beginning of this video, they started to happen without receiving much publicity from the media. Eventually, the people of Russia will realize that something is happening. And, it is better ha and it's better to happen sooner rather than later. But for now, Putin would want to prolong the inevitable unrests for as long as possible. We also spoke about the increase of size of the Russian military by an additional 180,000. To put this into perspective, in 2022 the military personnel count was slightly over 1 million. This number increased to 1,150,000 in 2023 and reached 1,320,000 in early 2024. By December, it is set to hit 1.5 million mark. The Russian Defense Ministry reported in July that approximately 190,000 individuals signed contracts in 2023, averaging around 1,000 new records per day. However, these figures do not account for personnel losses, including fatalities, injuries, and desertions. 
External estimates, such as for example those from the British Defense Secretary, suggest that Russian losses could be as high as 1,100 per day. While these statistics may vary in accuracy, though it is relatively accurate, it implies that the number of new records may barely offset the losses. This scenario highlights the challenges faced in the maintaining and expanding military personnel numbers during ongoing conflicts. As we already established, recruiting paid volunteers has become increasingly difficult. Beyond the financial incentives offered and the skills of new records, there is also another issue regarding the suitability of volunteers for active combat roles. Reports, for example, from Mediazone and the BBC indicate that the median age of Russian volunteers exceeds 40 years. This demographic trend presents obviously significant challenges. Older records may face physical limitations that hinder their ability to perform demanding military tasks. After all, signing a military contract for $20,000 does not mean that you'll be just sitting in a trench doing nothing. Activities such as running, jumping, enduring rigorous conditions, and even consuming and drinking inappropriate food and water are way more impact impactful for middle-aged individuals compared to their younger comrades. And then there is a huge stress, well probably one of the biggest one any person would ever experience in his or her life. So living in physical and dietary, dietary limitations already pushes the limits of a human body, adds stress and lack of sleep to it, and you go beyond even this border. The health risks associated with deploying older soldiers cannot be overlooked. Some of them were eliminated not by Ukrainians, but by their pre-own, pre-existing health conditions. On the other hand, in a typical conscription or mobilization effort, authorities have the access to a much wider pool of potential records, obviously of a higher quality. They can select candidates based on age, health, military occupational speci specialties and physical fitness, and just uh, take literally the best of the best. And guess what? They will not even need to pay seven figures to force these people into trenches. So, the reliance on paid volunteers limits the ability to be selective, to say the least. As a result, recruitment efforts became slow, expensive, ineffective, and yield uh, personnel which may not even meet the optimal standards for combat readiness. This is why the necessity to declare another round of mobilization once again crossed Putin's mind. He knows the consequences of such decision, but unfortunately for him, he does not have another choice. The hope here is that the people of Russia will give up and accept their fates after just a couple of weeks. The government basically has to ignore them and ignore all, all their consequential problems and wait out these two weeks, hoping it will not initiate countrywide protests. Basically Putin's favorite strategy. If you ignore the problem long enough, eventually it will go away. The sustainability of current recruitment methods, as you can see, is questionable. Increasing financial incentives may not attract the necessary numbers. As the pool of willing volunteers diminishes, the government faces a big dilemma. Keep doing what they do right now and extract the very last people willing to fight themselves, or to access an entirely new pool of people, at a risk of obviously much bigger unrests. The authorities have explored alternative sources of manpower in the past. For example, inmates were offered the opportunity to serve in exchange for certain consideration, most notably a pardon. Recent legislative changes now also allow defendants in criminal cases to sign military contracts, halting court proceedings during their service. And yes, you heard it right. <laughs> you can literally commit a crime in Russia, almost the worst types of them, sign a contract and still be free. Imagine serving side by side with such people, not knowing when their twisted minds decide to change once again. Taking other person's life for them is nothing extraordinary. Such measures indicate the lengths to which the government is willing to go to bolster military ranks. However, <laughs> initiating a new large-scale conscription presents significant political risks. The potential records now are those who have consciously avoided military service, disregarded previous draft notices, or were not enticed by financial incentives. Mobilizing individuals who are reluctant or even opposed to serving could lead to widespread dissatisfaction. 
especially when such people realize that they ended up in the military anyways, but they were not paid $20,000 to do it. Just like their comrade Anatoly, who is sitting literally next to them. This will even create a big separation within the army of Russia itself. The public awareness of the realities of military service has increased since the earlier stages of the conflict. Initial misconceptions about the nature and the duration of the service have been dissolved. Many now understand the serious and potentially indefinite commitment that military service entails, making them more resistant to conscription efforts. In response to challenges in enforced conscription, the government has introduced new mechanisms to streamline the process. President Putin ordered the creation of a comprehensive database of military-age individuals and an electronic draft register, which is set to become operational on November 1, 2024. Under this system, electronic drafts will carry the same legal weight as traditional paper notices. Previously, as soon as the paper draft notice was handed in person to a conscript, he becomes liable to show up in the military enlistment office, simple as that. Not doing so was only carrying administrative penalties. So that's why many young Russian men prefer to avoid the draft offices at all costs, walking miles away from them. They were not living under official dresses, living instead with their friends or relatives, or with parents, or leaving the country altogether. But now, once an electronic draft notice is logged into the system, it will be considered received after 7 days, even if the individual has not personally acknowledged it. So basically, there is no longer need for the military representatives to chase young Russians. It will be a person's responsibility to check daily if such notice was issued under his name. If so, the person has to come to the draft office himself or otherwise face consequences. For example, a travel ban will be imposed immediately once the notice appears in the register, limiting the individual's ability to leave the country. Also, those who fail to comply may face administrative restrictions, such as, for example, the suspension of driving licenses, limitations on financial transactions, such as taking loans or mortgages, and many other prohibitions. These measures signify a shift towards a more strict enforcement of conscription laws. The government aims to close previous loopholes that allowed individuals to evade draft notices by avoiding direct contact with draft officers. By leveraging digital systems and administrative penalties, authorities seek to ensure compliance on an individual basis, reducing the need for public announcements or large-scale mobilization efforts. That's basically the best what Putin's administration was able to come up with. A silent, never-ending mobilization, if you wanna call it this way, which will last for as long as the people of Russia allow it. Well, there I have it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please like this video, subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed today's episode and if you want to see more videos like this. If you wish to support my work, there are links down below, PayPal donations, Patreon subscriptions for bonus content. You can also buy the Russian Dude merch. All the links are down below. Thanks so much for watching. See you tomorrow. Sway. We do not believe